How's it going? My name is Jason Salinas. I'm the owner of SMB Elite Fitness in Roseville, California. Uh, I've been a trainer for over 20 years, love and passion for working out. And uh, one thing that I took into consideration in my early 30s was getting my blood levels checked and seeing how my hormone levels were. Uh, I worked with a physician out there in Roseville, California for probably about six years, referring all my clients to him. Uh, I definitely believe it's important to not only do an external evaluation with somebody, but also an internal evaluation as well and uh, helped him build his practice to the point where it was a seven month waiting list. And so I started uh, following Titan Medical Group on Instagram, watching what John and Sharice were doing. And I was really excited at the different uh, therapies they offered other than just TRT. And so I reached out to John and uh, basically got connected with them, got my blood work done, and I uh, was excited to try some new things. I've actually worked with Titan Complete as a staple, uh, Hercules Potion, Glutathione, all basic staples. I've been t doing TRT with them. They have me in getting my blood work done every six months, making sure I'm in line with everything else. And uh, it's, it's been great. I feel incredible. I'm actually competing at 47 years old, looking better than I did at 25 years old. And I feel kind of like Benjamin Button. Uh, I've referred, referred a handful of clients from Northern California here, and it's been super convenient because they've been able to actually Skype with the physicians. Staff has been incredible uh, getting back to clients and answering questions. Customer service has been incredible. I uh, get notified probably about the third week of every month just to check on me, see how I'm doing, and uh, seeing if I'm going to update my current status or add or change or adjust anything with my program. Um, not only has the customer service been incredible for me, but I like working with my clients and type medical as well. And so anytime my clients come to me with issues in regards to how they feel, I get a hold of Titan Medical, and if not, the front desk uh, or the assistant, Sharice, is even herself, one of the owners, been on the phone with them, making sure they get everything cleared for our people. So we appreciate and love uh, everything you guys do for us, and we're very grateful. And uh, it's been just a great fit. I've basically kind of been their, became their NorCal rep, I like to say, and I've uh, just been, been excited to be a part of the family. been with Titan Medical now for just about six years and um, definitely believe in everything they do and it's and I'm super excited that they're always on the cutting edge of every new therapy uh, or peptide that comes out so definitely if you haven't got with them get, get a hold of them and get your blood work done now
My name is Chenille Unitas. I have worked at Titan Medical Center for about three and a half years. My position here at Titan Medical Center is an advanced practice registered nurse and I got here by having a love for fitness and taking care of yourself and being proactive. So I just wanted to help myself follow that journey as well as other people. The best part about working for Titan Medical Center is the camaraderie between the staff as well as the patients here and just really incorporating them as a family to us and really focusing on their needs and their goals and everything that we can do to help them achieve their wellness. Some of the most common patient responses that we hear is a wide variety to you save my marriage, to I feel like I'm 30 again when they're 50 or even feel better than they did when they were younger, uh, feeling like they're excelling in their careers and weight loss goals and even shows if that's something that they like to do as well. My future goals with Titan Medical Center are pretty much wherever John and Cherise want to take me <laughs> and stay here long term and keep trying to make my patients happy. Hello, my name is John Sikoris, that's my beautiful wife, Sharice Sikoris, and we're the owners of Titan Medical Center. Today we want to talk about a great mother of antioxidants, glutathione. Glutathione's awesome for everybody because it helps with antioxidants in the system, that's the oxidation in your system it helps with. It also helps with getting rid of free radicals, boosting the immune system, it's good for the skin, for the brain, and it actually does a great liver detoxification as well. Um, we've used it on a lot of our patients, our doctors are, are very, very big advocates of glutathione. It's a natural way, it's already produced in the body. So, uh, you know, we want to share this information with you. If you're looking for a great therapy like that, then glutathione is definitely where to go. It also helps with inflammation throughout the body. So, you know, if you do have any, you know, previous injuries or say you have an autoimmune deficiency, 
Lyme's disease, Crohn's disease, all these things that they tell you there's nothing that they can do mm-hmm. but give you a bunch of prescription medication. Mm-hmm. It's actually an all-natural way to, you know, kind of help your day-to-day and give you a little bit of energy boosting and hopefully help with some of that, you know, some of that chronic pain that you, you know, feel on a day-to-day basis. You know, another great thing is, is day-to-day, if you have children and they're going to school like we do, right, they actually bring home those little cooties and you get sick. <laughs> Um, and it, it puts you down, it puts you back a couple of days. So glutathione actually boosts the immune system to kind of get past that. It'll actually feel better or, or get better faster. Um, you know, we we're big advocates of it as well. Um, glutathione can help with a lot of different things. If you're traveling or constantly on an airplane where there's a bunch of germs everywhere, mm-hmm. that's definitely a good reason to take glutathione every day too. You know, obviously you're traveling, everybody gets sick when they travel, they're touching everything, you know, planes, airports, everywhere mm-hmm. you go in an airport is absolutely, you know, full of germs. So, you know, if you're traveling, definitely a good one. You know, if you're a CEO, you're an athlete, you know, um, whatever you do and you're getting on a plane, you're going somewhere and it's going to take a wear and tear on your body, and you know you're going to be sitting next to somebody that's got cooties, make sure you take some glutathione. What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Awesome, good information that you guys can utilize. Honestly, whatever doesn't break you will make you stronger. That is the truth. Every week, if you don't know, we come up with these tips and tricks to help you guys enhance your relationships. I hope they all see this episode. Whether it's reigniting that passion or just developing a better, stronger relationship. We went through a lot of these trials and tribulations, so we wanted to give you guys the shortcut. I mean, you guys might even do this and not realize it, and your partner might be currently upset at you, so we might help you in that aspect. This is true. <laughs> so, we're going to... What's up, guys? John here. I'm Sharice. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week, me and Sharice are just going down the list, checking it twice, and <laughs> making sure we're giving you guys the best tips, tricks, and things that will hopefully help your guys' relationship, marriage, or future relationship for some of you guys and girls out there. So this week, uh, we were talking about beforehand, and we're like, you know what, what's really, really good that's going to cover all the bases here? Um, and something that happens to everybody. It doesn't matter if you're a girl or a guy, if you're in a marriage, or you're engaged, or you guys are just dating. Mm-hmm. So this week, we're going to cover... Uh, you know, how to find resolutions to arguments, fighting, or bickering, okay? Mm-hmm. And what's the best way to go about these things? How to deal with it. How to deal with it, right? Yeah. How to deal with it. Because it takes time it to does. know your person right? to really deal with it. And, you know, some people, you know, if you're just in the honeymoon stage, you might not have had an argument yet. So you're like, oh, we don't argue yet. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Well, give it a little <laughs> bit longer. I'm sure it's going to come up once it's, or twice. It's okay? coming. It's coming. You know, it, just, it just depends <laughs> on the people, but it's going to come, right? No matter if you're an alpha, you're a beta, you know, in the relationship, things are going to happen. So okay. how do you go about these things? And what do you kind of look for? That's the main question, right? So you get in a fight, let's say, with your significant other or you're dating somebody or whatever it is, uh, and have this argument, right? And you start arguing about these things uh, and you feel really strong about your side and they feel really strong about their side so what happens in that argument so people i guess people argue in different ways right there's like an abundance of ways right of how people argue (laughs) right sure there could be you know you have your your couples that yell and scream right and they both yell and scream and nobody hears anything because both of you guys are yelling and no one's listening right it's true they're just yelling and screaming at the same time that makes no sense but it's what happens um then you have couples that you know they, uh, they, they, they might, they might pick things up and throw them. Maybe not necessarily at you, right? Don't do but that. they might break things in the house, right? Just, I, I don't know why this happens. It just happens to, you know, be one of the things, right? I, I'd be lying if I left that out that you didn't pick something up off the shelf and throw it, or pick up a plate and throw it, because this has happened to many couples, right? Um, and then you have the people that uh, they don't yell or scream at all, which is probably really bad. You have the small little argument or disagreement or whatever it might be. It might be a big disagreement. And then you don't talk about it at all, right? Which is not good because now it's, you do this thing where it's like festering and it's, and it bottles up. Right. Right. And I've gotten better about, 
you know, not letting things bottle up with me. John's gotten better over the years, not letting things bottle up with him. And, you know, try to address it on, you know, on at least within a 24-hour time frame. Calm down for a second, then address it. Because, you know, if it bottles up, obviously, it's just going to, you're going to be, you're going to blow up like a little teapot, right? So, you know, it's just, it's a matter of time before it's like, and then all of a sudden, boom, you know, it's never a good thing. It's like a, a, a nuclear explosion, right? So, I mean, when people argue, right, they start talking about things and just something comes up, whatever. I want to do it like this. I, I don't think we should do it like this. And then you guys start arguing about it. And then it just starts ramping up, ramping up, ramping up. And that's kind of where people start getting where... It starts out with a conversation. The other side doesn't see the same way. And then it starts, you know, going higher and higher in pitch as, as far as your voice goes. Some people can, most people do it like that, I guess. Some people can really talk about it and then just go silent, which is not good either. Right. Because they're bottling up. But if they start getting up and you guys start yelling at each other, like, where's the resolution <laughs> with that, right? Or right. what can happen or what can make things better in that situation? Um, now some people are, are different, you know, some people, and you want to hit these things head on. You don't never want to let them fester, sit or keep going days, weeks, months, years, because it's it starts really to build bad. animosity, yeah. right? Animosity for the couple or animosity yeah. against the person. Right. And you're like, Oh, I just don't like this person no more. Yeah. That's not good either. Yeah. You know, but if you start yelling at each other, what can you guys do to maybe take it down a notch? Um, now for me, you know, it might be. Mm -hmm. Listen, let me take a little bit of time. Let me take a little bit of breather. That way you can kind of run through things in your head a little bit. Kind of, you know, calm down a little bit because, you know, you're high, you're tense. You know, and that's not good, right? That's aggression to a certain extent. And you don't want to be aggressive with your partner either. You know, you want to, you want to sit back and be able to talk to them in more of a mellow mood. Mm -hmm. Even if you feel really strong about something, you're really upset about it. But at least you can talk to them and you can facilitate and communicate with them. Yeah. I think that's the biggest thing. We talked about communication every episode. Communication is key. You, you see you see how this, <laughs> this keeps circling back to communication? It always does. It, it's really a vital part of any relationship, whether right. it's a, a love relationship or work relationship, whatever right. it is. So at that point, when you can calm down and you can really communicate you know, how you feel about it, why you feel about it this way, um, and then what's the resolution going to happen for both of you guys to come out of this both happy to a certain extent, right? Compromising. The compromise is huge. Right. Huge. It is. It really is. That meet each other at a halfway point. It really is. Because you're not always right, okay? And they're not always wrong. Yeah. So you can't always say, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right, I'm right. It'll never work out. I it's, promise it's you. It's never going to work out. And you guys can't yell at each other. Because listen, me and John have been together a long time, right? And I always double our years. Like, I want to say we've been together 20 years. And the reason why it's 20 years is because we are together every single day of every single hour, every minute of every day. So technically, right, you got to, like, double the time, right? So let's just say whatever, 13, 14 years, whatever, double the years to 20. So you learn people over time. And I'd be lying to you if I told you that me and John haven't had blowout arguments. When I talk about blowout arguments... In the very beginning, and guys, we were younger, okay? I was 21, so it's okay, right? But, you know, blowout arguments were screaming, yelling, you know, just next level, right? I mean, even go outside, yelling out there, making a scene, you know, I was good at making scenes, right? And this is not the way to handle things, but at least I can tell you from my experience of what I did that I probably shouldn't have done and now I do handle differently because right. I'm much more mature right. and I'm older and I understand my husband and um you know I just try to now I handle it a much different way but back then it was just I was so hot so ready hot ready boom boom it didn't matter I didn't care what he had to say it was what I had to say you're gonna listen to me and if you start talking I'm gonna talk louder and then just it escalates right so one of you guys is going to have to take a step down, you know, or maybe both of you guys need to take a step apart, you know, because that step apart even, you know, because John used to want to go for a ride, right, in the car. Of course, when he wants to go for a ride, I'm like, well, who are you going to go talk to in the car? Who are you going to go call? Huh? Who are you going to call? Are you going to go call and tell, tell them all what's going on? Huh? You want you want their advice? Is that what's going to happen? Who are you going to call when you go in the car? Where are you going? How long are you going to be gone for? And it would be like, I mean, this poor guy's been through a lot, right? I feel bad. <laughs> I do. Help me! Help me! <laughs> I feel bad for John. He's been through a lot, right? 
But, you know, you learn over time and, you know, it kind of comes to the compromise of like, you know, to leave him alone. Maybe he doesn't have to leave, so I don't have to scream and be like, where are you going? What are you doing? Da, da, da. He, maybe you could just step away for a minute or I'll walk away for a minute. And it really, he doesn't take that much time to cool off. It usually takes maybe, back in the day, it was a li- like a little bit, an hour or two. Nowadays, it's maybe like 15, 20 minutes, right? But, you know, you learn your partner and then you apply it. You can't just disregard it because you'll never get anywhere. You guys will always continue fighting and you'll never be able to get any resolutions out of it because you keep fighting the same exact way. I mean, we I'm telling you, we used to have blood arguments, super blood arguments. And nowadays, you know, and I'll use an example, you know, of what I do now. And now I'm going to tell him. I don't think I've told him this yet. So, you know. Happy ABC, he gets to know. But nowadays, if there is a disagreement, right? And, you know, I don't care if we're around people or even if we're not around people, right? And I know that he's pissed off, right? Or he's in a bad mood or he doesn't feel good, whatever, okay? And he, because he doesn't normally get mad. So it's very seldom that I have to do this. So I just suck it up and do it. So if I disagree with him, and I, I, this would be something back in the day where I would fight with him about it and say, uh uh-uh, uh, that is not how it went down. This is how it went down. This is not right. I think you're wrong, whatever. At this point, now I just say, okay, that's it. I just say, okay. I don't even say, I don't even give an answer or anything. I just say, okay. And like when you say that, when you just say that, it kind of just, um, it just stops like, I mean, it really gives your significant other no other option to just keep talking about it. And then if they could say it again, then you just say, okay. And just, you don't have to say it mean or rude or anything. Just say, okay. If you need to talk about it in an hour about, okay, hey, listen, you know, I think that this, this could have been done differently or this is how I felt about that. But in the moment, in the heat of the moment, when you know that they're mad and they don't feel good, whatever's going on, right? Just take the moment to just say, okay. And I promise you, like, that is something that is the best advice I can give you. That has taken me 10 years to do, okay? So, because I am very, 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 very passionate about what I do. And obviously, if I think I'm right about something, I'll be the first person to speak up and be like, hold up, stop right there. That is not how I went down. And I don't know why you're yelling at me about it, but this is what's going on. Now I've learned, I'll say it when I need to say it, but... Every once in a while, I'll give it to him and just say, okay. Because he can't argue with me if I just say, okay. I'm going to keep yelling at you. No one's going to keep yelling at you if you say, okay. So just say, okay. Don't say it sarcastically. Don't say it like that. Just say, okay. Because that's just going to add more Don't say, fire. okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. Don't do that. Okay. Just maybe just agree for the moment. Okay. To just let things cool off, simmer. And then if you need to address it in an hour, then address it in an hour when things are cooled down and they're not in the moment. But that is just an example of me telling you how to handle it at that very moment. Now, you may not like it. Someone like me, I'm alpha female in this relationship. This is the alpha outside of this relationship. I am the alpha everywhere, right? So it's in my genes to be like, no, I am going to speak. So... (laughs) But, you know, I, sometimes you just have to take, you know, bite your tongue for a minute and just let it ride, you know. And sometimes it takes, it does take some training to do. It yeah. takes training to do. And I'm it sure takes you. self-control. I mean, you, I'm sure you have things that you've probably come up with up to date on how to deal with me. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, because I mean, I'm crazy. You know, I'll, like, no, I'll just, I'll just I'll try to talk to her about the things like, you know, like, listen. <laughs> Obviously, I don't do it in front of people or whatever. That's the first mistake if you do that, right? But, you know, if you have a problem or an issue and you guys need to talk about it, um, then at that point, you need to set some time aside and kind of think about how you're going to relay this to your partner, right? And don't sugarcoat things. I don't mean it like that. You need to be truthful and straightforward, but talk in a respectful manner. Like, listen, you know, I really don't like the way this went down. Um, I don't really want to do this anymore. And at that point... You know, can we come to terms with that? And I think your partner will be more responsive to that. You know, a lot of people, the first mistake that happens is is they hold these things in. They start drinking or mm-hmm. doing something else. Mm-hmm. And then at that point, it comes out wrong. Uh, and then it's both parties wrong. start fighting really bad. And they might not even think 
about what they're saying to a certain extent. Uh, and it might come out wrong and it might come out really bad, right? And this can add to more problems down the line if you do it like that. Mm -hmm. So do it in a sober manner. You know, talk to them about what the problem was, why it affected you, or why you think that you were right in the situation. Um, and at that point, you guys got to talk about it and then come to a compromise. Say, listen, you know, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Don't that, be scared to you say know. you're sorry. No, that's the first thing. Yeah. Don't you know, be scared to say you're sorry. It takes a bigger person, you know, and listen, I'm alpha male out there, and I know a lot of alpha guys like that that think that it's a weakness to an apology, right? And that's not true, right? It takes a bigger man to be able to apologize that they've done wrong um, and want to move forward. You know, that's that's a big, big thing. But a lot of people don't want to do that because it's a sign of weakness. And that's how I was raised. You know, that's how the old schoolers are. Don't apologize because it's a sign of weakness. Uh, I don't really think that now. I, I think that, you know, if, if I'm a wrong... And uh, I'm going to apologize for it because I truly mean the apology. Yeah, don't say it if you really don't yeah, mean like, it. Whatever, I'm sorry. You know, that just that comes across really bad, right? Yeah. Your partner's going to take that and be like, well, are you really sorry? Or are you just saying because you wanted me to hear that? Right. And, you know, and then your actions speak louder than words, right? Mm -hmm. Because if you apologize and you compromise and you still do it, then you're really not sorry and you're just going to do it anyway. And that's going to piss them off even more. Right. So, you know, at that point, you got to come to a certain, it comes to a certain aspect in your life where you're going to grow a little bit more maturity-wise, mm -hmm. and especially in arguing. If, if you have something that you guys need to, to battle out, per se, you guys need to sit, talk about it, and then find a resolution without screaming at each other, um, bringing each other down. Saying things against your partner, you know, you're calling yeah, names and stuff. You're such. calling them names, and that's yeah, I mean, a big one. Because we've once all you done say, it, probably, right? Yeah, for sure. And then once you say it, you can't take it back. You can't take it back. So, all you can do is kind of try to fix it after the fact, but you can't take it back. Once it comes out of your mouth, yeah. you can't take it back. So at that point, that's the point of this conversation. Make sure you guys are growing in your relationship. And this means if you have arguments, approach it like an adult, approach it civilized. You know, with love to your partner, even if you hate what would happen, you find out something horrible happened, you have to approach it like that. You know, be level-headed. Um, and that's the best advice I can give you guys from my end. I mean, that is what it is. So grow up, all right? <laughs> Things are going to happen. Deal with them. Hit them straight head on. Uh, and show Just love to your don't partner. hit them straight head on with the plate in the kitchen. Don't hit them. Yeah. Don't fight outside. Don't throw any glasses don't, or you know, break you don't anything. Want, you don't want your significant other going to jail or anything like this either, um, right? No. Unless they're doing something really bad. Never either. call the cops. <laughs> Unless they're doing something really bad. <laughs> you really, guys, really need to. Right? Leave because them out of it. <laughs> that's going to cause other problems down the road. That's going to cause more problems, yeah. So... <laughs> This is just another little <laughs> tip and trick for me and Cherise for Cupid's Corner. We're here with you guys every Sunday at 11 a.m. here on ABC. Make sure you guys go check out our social media, Titan Medical Center on Instagram and Facebook, TikTok too. And all our great videos and contents are on YouTube. Go there, Titan Medical Center, look it up. Click subscribe, hit the all notification bell, and you'll be tuned in to me and Cherise and everything Titan Medical Center. We love you guys. Thank you guys for the support week in and week out. And we'll see you next week on another Cupid's Corner. See you then.